We bow our heads and we pray. Lord, sanctify us by the truth. Your word, it is the truth. Amen. If we have Vincent van Gogh in our midst, the, the famous painter of the, the Starry Night and many other uh, amazing paintings, and we set a, a large canvas in front of him, and we commissioned him to paint for us a masterpiece work of art that, that we could put down in our fellowship area at our church here. But all we gave him was the canvas he would probably look at us and say, I can't work with this. There's nothing that I can do with it. What do you mean? We, we got one of the most famous artists here to go ahead and, and do an amazing work of art for us. But the artist is going to need the correct tools. He's going to need the paintbrush. He's going to need the paint in order to be able to carry out the work that we've asked him to do properly. Likewise, in order to connect people to Christ, in order to bring people to God, Jesus equipped his people with tools to carry out that work. And tonight in our gospel lesson in Matthew chapter 28, God gives those tools to his disciples and he gives them to you and to me. The Great Commission, as, as we call it, is... is is one of the, the sections of Scripture that gives us our greatest purpose to exist as Christians. We are able to go out into this world and tell people about the life-saving message of Jesus. What a, a wonderful thing for you and for me to be a part of. And who does it say we get to go out to, and tell about this? The world. So there's your canvas. You've got the world there in front of you. God has instructed us to go and tell others about this message of Jesus. He says, there, there's a place that I specifically want you to go out and do it. But in the wide scope of things, our canvas is the entire world. Child, uh, adult, young, old, uh, every single nation that there is. We're supposed to look beyond ourselves culturally. We're supposed to look beyond ourselves socioeconomically. Uh, we're supposed to look out uh, for people we don't share common interests with. That's our, our canvas. It's everyone. Now, in the narrow scope of things, we each have our, our own areas that God has blessed us to be able to go out and share this message. Here at St. Paul, I can think of many wonderful opportunities that we have. We're surrounded by different cultures throughout this city. We are surrounded by university students who walk past our doors each and every day, there are people around us that are looking for spiritual answers, and we are here to give them that. The canvas is there, and it's in front of us, and it's in, in front of each of you, too, as you go throughout your lives. So the question is, what are the tools uh, that, that we go out to and we use? Well, for the disciples, uh, for a while, it was quite easy for them because they followed what Jesus did, and they listened to exactly what Jesus had to do, or had to say. And they didn't have to worry about a whole lot, because they would, they would go with Jesus, they would listen to what he said, he was healing, he was forgiving people, it, it, was, it was going well. But the, the disciples knew, because Jesus had told them, it wasn't always going to be that way. There was going to be a time where Jesus was going to go back into heaven, and yes, Jesus would be the one that always is carrying out the, the ministry work, and that is the one that is supplying the results for the ministry work that, that we carry out. But there would be a time when he's back in heaven and he's empowering us to now go out and do that work. That time was, was coming soon for the disciples, and that time is, is now for, for you and for me. But Jesus didn't say, here you go, here's this massive canvas of people, go out into the world, uh, good luck, try to figure it out. 
No, he left them with some instructions. He left them with tools for how they were to go out and do that. He says, go out, use my greatest tool, the gospel. You and I have the tool to to go out and proclaim a a life-saving name of Jesus that is considered the very power of God. And that's hard for us to fathom. This almighty God who created the entire world says this is his power, the gospel, his word. So what does he, he specifically tell us to do in this section from Matthew chapter 28? He says, go and baptize. Spiritually, each and every one of us are born dead in our sins. And what does God do through baptism? He says, you have been made alive. You have been uh, given a rebirth, a renewal by the Spirit. Spiritually, we are are born into this hostile relationship with God. We are born, born as enemies of God. And what does God say that he gives to you and to me through baptism? He says, you are made a child of God. Your relationship has completely been changed. Spiritually, we are born as people who are covered with such dirt and stench of our sin And yet, what does God promise through baptism? He promises you've been washed clean. You have been forgiven. You see, these spiritual needs, everything that we need spiritually is provided for us at our baptism. It is the tool that we need. It's the tool that the Holy Spirit uses to create that faith in people who are faithless. But it's important for us also to recognize that baptism isn't some sort of magical cloak. Uh, It it isn't something that we simply do and then we we move on from it and we never have to worry about this faith thing ever again. Uh, No, God says quite the opposite. He says, be on your guard that you do not fall from your secure position. So go, use this tool that I've given to you. Go use this this powerful tool of baptism that that I've laid out before you. But don't just stop there. And continue to use the word to teach. Uh, If we think that that baptism is uh, the end of God's saving work, it would be kind of similar to like um, using a backhoe to, to build a skyscraper. Yes, a backhoe is going to be necessary to build the foundation, to to help uh, set the foundation for the skyscraper that you are going to build. So you need it, but you're also going to need other tools to help you finish that skyscraper. And as we we think about it this way, it really shapes everything that we do as we carry out the ministry work. We bring forth the gospel through baptism. Baptism. But then we have the opportunity to share God's word through everything that we do. Uh, through, through worship, we are fed spiritually as we get to gather around God's word together. And we get to focus on our baptisms. And then we get to be reminded of the forgiveness, the, the life, the salvation that Jesus has won for us. Through various ministry programs, whether it's Sunday school, whether it's Bible study, whether it's all sorts of small groups that that we have set up, what do we have the opportunity to do? Gather around other people who care about and who love Jesus. And this doesn't just happen in the church. Uh, This isn't just a growing that that is is for here. No, consider the role that that parents, uh, that godparents, uh, that friends have to be able to go out and strengthen and encourage people with the word daily. We're disciples. We're all disciples who have been commissioned to work on this canvas. And God gives us the tool of his gospel to be that power that creates and strengthens faith as we as we go along the way. So God specifically in this section calls us to go. But how many times don't I feel like God hasn't equipped me with the correct tools? Don't I feel like God has set me in front of this canvas and said, good luck? 
I find myself, me, time and time again, wondering, how do I reach people? H how do we get out there, and how do we tell people uh, about Jesus? L Lord, I feel like I've done all I can to, to be there to help and support them. Uh, I feel like I've tried over and over again to be a helping hand when they, they need me to be there. Uh, I feel like I, I've tried time and time again to, to come and be part of this new program that, that we're trying to, to work on at church. But nothing seems to be working. Could it be that, that sometimes I so often get focused on me thinking that I need to build the foundation of people's faith with my own tools? And sure, that may be part of the way we get the building started. But in every relationship, in every program, God is giving me the opportunity to show that his tools are effective. Maybe the reason you came into the building for, for the very first time um, was because there was a meal before church. Or, or maybe the, the, the reason you came into this, uh, into this church the very first time is because you saw a community uh, that, that was here, and this could be your community. And maybe that's what keeps bringing you back. That's not what, what works on the heart. And that's not what makes you and me a Christian. Because if the only reason I consider myself to be a Christian is the good community that I'm surrounded by, then I'm really missing the point altogether. Because deep down we all understand that we had a problem. I alone am not enough to stand before God. And I needed a Savior to work on my heart. And you have that Savior. And that's the tool that's going to keep people coming back. Baptized into the name of the Father, into the name of the Son, into the name of the Holy Spirit. What did God do? He began a life-saving work in you. Dead in your sin, you needed life. And nothing you could do on your own, no other person's goodness towards you, could save you from the lost state that, that you were in. But faith, faith worked in your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit to believe that you are born into a, a living hope uh, now assures you that your sins have been forgiven. Baptism sparked that, that life. It was the very beginning and now moved by the Holy Spirit who graciously was poured out on you in baptism. God now pierces your heart each and every day with his word. And it's that word of God which comes into our heart and centers us around one central figure. And that one central figure, that one person, Jesus, that's the heart and the soul of everything that we do, the heart and the soul of your salvation. There is no salvation. There is no church without Jesus. And we proclaim his name as our greatest tool to be the thing that spreads his gospel in this world. You see, the, the tool that we have, the, the tool of Christ, really paints the picture for us. We were lost and separated from God due to our sin. We needed someone to take our place. We understand that the, the punishment that, that my sin rightly earned was that criminal's death on a cross. But we have a Savior who took our place. And his blood shed on that cross to declare you and me innocent, to declare the world innocent. It becomes yours so personally in your baptism. As that water was, was poured over your head, you were assured that that blood of Jesus on the cross, it cleansed you from each and every one of your sins. The picture's clear. Though I am so undeserving, Jesus is loving. Though I am so unfaithful, Jesus is faithful to me. The problem has been solved. I can stand before God. Not because I have lived a mostly good life or not because I have done uh, many good things 
but because Jesus has lived a perfect life for me and given me that perfect life. So let's paint that picture on the canvas that God has laid out for us. As we meet people, as we see opportunities that, that God brings into our lives, let's unveil that gospel, not only through our words, but also through our actions, and help others see what, what God means to you, and, and then let them experience that, that love by the way you, you treat them and by the way you tell them about it. But as you do so, there's a little thing you can't forget, that God goes with you every time you do it. Every hour, every day, God is there. He's guiding you in your life of faith, and he's commissioning you to, to be the one that works out to, in, in his field to paint the picture of salvation clearly to many more. And God's going to work through uh, your efforts. The canvas is there. We know there are people that need to hear about Jesus. The tools are there. Baptism, the word of God. We trust that it's powerful and God promises that he's going to work through that. And your God is there as you carry out those efforts. Let that tool be the, the thing that shapes your heart. And then as that word shapes your heart, let that gospel be the tool that you use to go and tell others about him. Let's go forth with God's power and share that message. Amen.